Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Sunday, April 28, 2024. The year is 1611. Our main topic, the University of Santo Tomas in Manila, one of the oldest existing universities in Asia and one of the world's largest Catholic universities in terms of enrollment, was founded. In the bustling city of Manila, Philippines, a historic event took place on April 28, 1611. It was the founding of the University of Santo Tomas, which has since become one of the oldest existing universities in Asia and one of the world's largest Catholic universities in terms of enrollment. Founded by Spanish friar Miguel de Benavides, the third Archbishop of Manila, the university was established with the aim of providing quality education to the youth of the region. At the time, the university was known as the Pontifical and Royal University of Santo Tomas, Manila, reflecting its ties to the Holy See and the Spanish monarchy. It was a significant development in the history of education in the Philippines and marked the beginning of a long tradition of academic excellence. The university's founding was not only a milestone for education but also a testament to the strong Catholic faith of the people in the region. It was a manifestation of the Catholic Church's commitment to education and its desire to provide opportunities for the youth to learn and grow. Today, the University of Santo Tomas continues to thrive as a leading institution of higher learning in the Philippines. Its rich history and academic excellence have made it a beacon of hope for generations of students seeking a quality education. The university's legacy is a reminder of the importance of education in shaping the future of individuals and society as a whole. In conclusion, the founding of the University of Santo Tomas in Manila is a significant event in the history of education in the Philippines and a testament to the Catholic Church's commitment to academic excellence. It has played a vital role in shaping the lives of countless individuals and continues to be a source of inspiration for generations to come. The year is 2004. On the news, CBS News released evidence of the Abu Ghraib torture and prisoner abuse. The photographs show rape and abuse from the American troops over Iraqi detainees. Good evening, and welcome to our evening news broadcast. Tonight, we bring to you a shocking and disturbing report from the front lines of the Iraq War. CBS News has obtained evidence of human rights violations and war crimes committed by members of the United States Army and Central Intelligence Agency against detainees at the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. The evidence, in the form of photographs, shows physical abuse, sexual humiliation, physical and psychological torture, and rape, as well as the killing of Manadel al-Jamadi and the desecration of his body. These abuses have been condemned internationally and have sparked outrage and disbelief within the United States. The photographs, which were released by CBS News today, show the brutal treatment of Iraqi detainees at the hands of American troops. The images are graphic and disturbing and show scenes of rape, physical abuse, and humiliation. The abuses are alleged to have taken place between 2003 and 2004 and involve members of the military and intelligence agencies. The release of these photographs has sparked a national debate about the conduct of American troops in Iraq and has raised questions about the ethical treatment of prisoners of war. The incident has also highlighted the need for greater transparency and accountability in the military and intelligence agencies. The Abu Ghraib prison abuse scandal is a dark stain on the reputation of the United States and has damaged the country's standing in the international community. It is a reminder that even in times of war, the mistreatment of prisoners is never acceptable, and that those who commit such abuses must be held accountable. We will continue to follow this story and provide updates as more information becomes available. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our selected holiday for today, National Heroes Day, Barbados. 
National Heroes Day is a public holiday in Barbados, celebrated on April 28th. It commemorates the contributions and achievements of the island's national heroes, who have played a significant role in shaping the country's history and culture. Cultural significance, National Heroes Day is an opportunity for Barbadians to reflect on their rich history and heritage, and to honor the individuals who have helped to make their country the vibrant and thriving nation it is today. The holiday serves as a reminder of the struggles and sacrifices made by these heroes, and the impact they have had on the lives of the people. The holiday is also a time for celebration, as Barbadians come together to pay tribute to their heroes through various events and activities. These may include parades, ceremonies, and cultural performances, showcasing the country's rich cultural heritage. In addition, National Heroes Day serves as a symbol of national pride and unity, bringing together people from all walks of life to celebrate their shared history and heritage. It is a time to reflect on the values and principles that have shaped the country, and to look towards the future with hope and optimism. Overall, National Heroes Day is a significant holiday in Barbados, celebrating the country's rich history, cultural heritage, and the contributions of its national heroes. It is a time for reflection, celebration, and national pride, and serves as a reminder of the importance of preserving and honoring the country's history and culture. On this day, in 1970, Diego Shimian, Argentinian footballer and manager, was born. Diego Shimian, also known as El Cholo, is a highly respected and accomplished figure in the world of football. Born in Argentina, he began his playing career as a midfielder and went on to have a successful career, both domestically and internationally. After retiring from playing, he transitioned into management and has since become one of the most successful managers in the sport. Shimian's playing career spanned over a decade, during which he played for several clubs in Argentina, Spain, and Italy. He was known for his tireless work ethic, leadership skills, and ability to score crucial goals. He was a key player in the teams he played for, and his contributions helped his teams win several titles, including a Copa Libertadores and a UEFA Champions League. After retiring from playing, Shimian turned his attention to management. He began his managerial career with Atletico Madrid's youth team and quickly worked his way up to become the first team manager. Under his leadership, Atletico Madrid has become one of the top teams in La Liga, winning several titles, including a league championship, a Copa del Rey, and a UEFA Europa League. Shimian's success as a manager can be attributed to his strong leadership, tactical acumen, and ability to get the best out of his players. He is known for his high-intensity pressing tactics, which have become a hallmark of his teams. He also places a strong emphasis on teamwork, discipline, and player development, which has helped his teams achieve consistent success. In addition to his success on the field, Shimian is also known for his strong personality and charisma. He is a passionate and driven individual who demands the best from himself and his players. He has become a beloved figure in Madrid, where he is admired for his dedication, work ethic, and commitment to the club. Shimian's achievements have not gone unnoticed, and he has received several accolades for his contributions to the sport. He has been named the La Liga Manager of the Year multiple times, and he has also been nominated for the FIFA World Coach of the Year Award. In conclusion, Diego Shimian is a highly respected and accomplished figure in the world of football. His success as a player and manager is a testament to his dedication, hard work, and leadership skills. He is a true legend of the sport, and his contributions to the game will be remembered for years to come. We remember the life of Ann Petrie, American novelist, born 1908, who died on this date in 1997. Ann Petrie was a groundbreaking American writer who left an indelible mark on the literary world. Born in 1908, Petrie defied the odds of her time, becoming a celebrated author, journalist, and voice for marginalized communities. Her debut novel, The Street, published in 1946, catapulted her to fame, selling over a million copies and cementing her place in history as the first African-American woman to achieve this feat. Petrie's writing was characterized by its raw, unflinching portrayal of the African-American experience. Her works often explored themes of race, class, gender, and the struggles of everyday people. Her writing was not only powerful but also accessible, making her a beloved figure among readers from all walks of life. In addition to her literary success, Petrie was a dedicated journalist, contributing to publications such as The New Yorker and The Saturday Review. 
Her reporting shed light on issues affecting African American communities, further solidifying her commitment to amplifying marginalized voices. Petrie's impact extended beyond the literary world. She was a vocal advocate for civil rights, using her platform to speak out against injustice and discrimination. Her activism earned her recognition and respect from prominent figures, including Langston Hughes and Eleanor Roosevelt. Despite her many accomplishments, Petrie's life was not without its challenges. She faced discrimination and sexism, both in her personal and professional life. However, these obstacles only strengthened her resolve, and she continued to write and advocate for change until her passing in 1997. And Petrie's legacy lives on through her work, which continues to inspire generations of writers, journalists, and activists. Her unwavering commitment to truth, justice, and equality serves as a testament to a remarkable spirit in her place in American literary history. This was Today in History, an AIA podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.